Hi, this is uh, Dr. David Smipolisky, one of the co-editors on the Fits on the Go blog. I'm here with Dr. Chaval, who is the incoming president of the American College of Cardiology. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, David. Happy to be here. Thank you. I wanted to talk to you. You gave an interesting talk on maintenance of certification. Can you give uh, the fellows in training a quick overview of what's going on and where you think things are going to go in the future? Well, maintenance of certification is something that uh, our early career uh, physicians and fellows in training uh, uh, view a little bit differently than those of us who've been in practice for a long time. It's sort of part of life. I think the key elements here are, are firstly, that the college is committed, as we are as professionals, to make certain that we have verifiable, ongoing maintenance of learning, education, and ability to take care of our patients the best way possible. The American Board of Internal Medicine changed the way they verified that with types of maintenance of certification uh, in 2014 and an evolutionary pattern that made it, we thought, sometimes a little bit onerous for physicians to be able to keep up, do all the things they needed to do, and certify. So it time-consuming, expensive, and without a lot of published data that verifies the, the value. So the college has been working with ABIM, the college along with a lot of other organizations, to try and see if we can't modify the process so that it accomplishes the ultimate goal, providing better care to patients. I think for the, for, uh, the fellows in training, it'll be an interesting exercise, and I think it'll be an evolutionary exercise. So what we see in the next 12 months may not exactly be what you're doing 10 years from now, because... This is a science that isn't really well developed. That's really interesting to hear, and of course, a lot of interest to the uh, fellows in training. What is the ACC doing right now, and how is the ACC working with the ABIM in trying to transform it and turn it into something a bit more productive and efficient? So we, we first of all, uh, to try and get an idea of our members, we surveyed the members twice to get their input on exactly what were the problems and the opportunities. Then we developed two task forces. The first uh, was designed to try and interact specifically with ABIM to articulate changes that we thought would be Im uh, improvements in the process. The second task force was developed to try and look at alternate ways of certification to, to acknowledge that if ABIM wasn't able to provide the type of certification that was helpful to our members, perhaps we could develop an alternate process. What we found with the second uh, is that as we were moving through that, ABIM has made substantial changes in their processes already. So we're still watching, still keeping all of our opportunities for our, for our patients and for our members open. But at the moment, it looks like uh, for now, ABIM has made some substantial modifications and uh, to try and improve what's going on. So it, it looks encouraging. We're still talking with them on a regular basis. Several of us will be traveling to Philadelphia in uh, 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 several weeks to uh, talk with them again. So it's an ongoing process. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. And again, if you'd like to catch any more videos on the coverage of the ACC Legislative Conference, please visit us at www.youtube.com slash fits on the go.